a dark night in a city that knows how to keep its secrets. But one man is still trying to find the answers to life's persistent questions. Guy Noir, Private Eye. Call me a cynic, but nothing clarifies a man's thinking quite like looking down the barrel of a revolver in the hand of a man who's seriously irked with you and considering homicide as a solution to a problem. This has happened to me occasionally in my so-called career as a private eye in St. Paul, Minnesota, and each occurrence promoted clear thinking, inconvenient though it seemed at the time. Christians try to find clarity through prayer, but you don't really know what prayer is until you meet someone who's eager to shoot you. I'm referring to an afternoon last February when an 82-year-old mobster named Joey Roast Beef sat in my office on the 12th floor of the Acme building with a cocked pistol aimed at my chest. An 82-year-old mobster who I believe I have sometimes known as Joey Robitussin, but today I know him as Joey Roast Beef. All right, now, uh, talk to me. His hairy finger was coaxing the trigger of his pistol. Did you say talk to me? That's what I said. Talk to me. Suddenly, everything got clearer for me. The, the delicate beauty of life and its fragility and the sudden relative insignificance of economic theory. Moments before, on this particular February day, I was in my office high above the poor souls on the street struggling through the snowbanks. And I was reading a trashy novel in which a 23-year-old fashion model is attracted to a heavy-set 69-year-old guy in a wrinkled suit. <laughs> I was thinking about ordering a hot pastrami from Danny's Deli and hoping Danny would add it to my tab, although my tab was long, two or three hundred bucks. Not good, but business was slow and a guy's got to eat. Preferably, maybe pastrami on a, on a Kaiser, slice of onion, a squirt of hearty mustard to clear the sinuses. I'm wearing long underwear, which got bunched up in a way that made me think about my prostate. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I'm listening to voicemail. Yeah, this is Doris from the Shropshire Arms. Hey, I'm sick and tired of you being three weeks late on the rent. <laughs> Guy, it's Sugar. Listen, I'm so sorry, but I can't have lunch with you on your birthday in March because I'm taking a Caribbean cruise with Wally. Okay, bye. So I was in a dark state of mind when I hear this heavy thumping on the door. Hey, Noir, open up. I know you're in there, you weasel. It was him, the senior citizen of organized crime. The office is closed, Joey. So he threw open the door, and he stomped in all 380 pounds of it. Uh, you forgot to lock your door, Noir. <laughs> what a genius you are. It's amazing someone didn't rub you out a long time ago. He was draped in a blue seersucker suit, and looked like a toad in gift wrap, and a yellow shirt and a pink tie, his thinning black hair slicked back, peering out through black horn rims. And he looked like one of those fat guys with a chest full of medals who run South American republics, even though the jacket lapels had traces of smuts on them. But his beetle brow was set for battle, his jaw jutting out, his dewlaps quivering. He was wheezing as you or I would if we were five feet four and weighed 380 pounds. He carried an oxygen tank with a plastic tube up his nose. <laughs> hey, Joey, hey, why, why? No good morning, huh? No how are you? I know how you are. You are in big, big trouble, smart guy. Uh, That's right, I'm done with you. 
If you don't tell me what I need to know, you're going to be sleeping in the dirt and making friends with the maggots. He lowered himself gingerly into my old oak chair. It groaned under him, and he pulled out his Colt 45 and aimed it at my sternum. It appeared to be loaded with bullets. Listen, Joey, I'm expecting visitors, okay? So, uh, you know, I don't have time for extended conversation there. It was a lie, of course, but when you're dealing with an angry armed man, you'd like him to think that witnesses could arrive at any moment. Look, this won't take long. About two minutes. The word on the street, Noir, is that you're holding out on me on a very lucrative deal involving millions. Oh, come on, Joey. That's right. And you made a big, big mistake thinking I'm such a dope I wouldn't find out about it, ah. which is an insult. Oh. I'm insulted. And I'm going to give you about two minutes to tell me what's going down exactly and what your take is going to be and when you will split that with me. So come on, out with it. Oh, come on, Joey. Give me a hint here, huh? What? what? I got no idea what you're talking about. What do you, what, what, what do you want? You want? You want to know who to, who to pick in the seventh at Belmont? No, huh? no, you, no. You, you want the formula of the atomic bomb? What, no. what, what, what do you want, Joey? Look, look, it involves you and that dancer at the Kit Kat Club huh? named Naomi Fallopian. Yeah, what yeah. about her? Yeah, the one who got her PhD and now she's teaching women's rights or something at the U. Let's start with her, huh? He shifted yeah. his enormity in the chair and it groaned, so I can imagine it collapsing and him sprawled on the floor and me leaping up and whacking him senseless with the desk lamp. I could also imagine the shock of the fall twitching his trigger finger and a poof of flame and the bullet hitting me in the frontal lobe and turning me into a cauliflower. The second possibility seemed just as likely. <coughs> Look, don't make me repeat myself, Noir. You're walking around about to make a kill and then retire to a penthouse somewhere with a revolving king-size oh, bed. Where do you get that, Yeah, Joey? under a ceiling mirror with you and her in a pink penoir reflected in it. Penoir? I've never heard you use the word penoir hey, before. Hey, I got some schooling. Anyway, it's all okay. You know, huh? I don't begrudge you the comforts of life. Well, thank you. I'm only looking to collect my share. Yeah, otherwise Miss Fallopian is going to be wearing a black suit and a hat with a veil and crying into a hanky as she gazes at the china vase containing your ashes. He set the pistol down on the desk and adjusted his air hose, which was taped to his upper lip. I wonder if some kind of nasal spray wouldn't help here. Joey? How about some Robitussin? <laughs> Joey, listen, I, I respect you, I respect your perspicacity, but as to this bum information somebody sold you about me and Miss Fallopian, Joey, listen, you're woofing down the wrong rainbow, sweetheart. There's no pot of gold at the end of it. It's just an old private eye with lower back pain and a pocket full of breath mints. Namely me, okay? Oh, come on, come There's on. There's no killing about to be made here, Joey. Come on, whoever whispered this in your ear is pulling your leg. Huh. I say this as an old friend. This is delusional thinking, Joey. If you're not careful, you're going to wind up on the funny farm talking to the window shades. So, <laughs> I was hoping to build doubt in the man's mind, but his firm grip on the pea shooter told me I was not succeeding. He was in no mood for storytelling. Come on, come on, tell me what's going on, Dewar, or else you're gonna get a new buttonhole, right in between those other two buttonholes. It occurred to me that life without parole might not be a deterrent to somebody in bad shape like Mr. Roast Beef. <laughs> a hospital is a hospital, whether it's Mount Sinai or Sing Sing. Shall we listen, if I, if I were you, huh, I'd go home and Ask the beautiful Adele to fix your Reuben and lie down, have a nice nap. I mean, you're obviously under a lot of stress right now, so yeah, yeah. don't have a coronary. Yeah, you're okay? going to be under huh? even more stress when this bullet hits your rib cage. Uh, huh? The last man who double-crossed me is wearing the pine kimono, mister. That's right, he's taking a dirt nap, if you get my drift. So start talking, or I'm going to roll the credits. 
that little metallic scritch and the click clarified my thinking. I'm not going to beg for my life, I decided. I'm going to try pushing Joey's buttons and rile him up so he can't think so. Maybe he shoots himself in the foot. Listen, fat man. What? Listen to me. You ever hang out up around 102nd of Broadway, huh? Good old what? New York. New York, New York, the city's so nice, they named it twice, huh? We used to use guys like you for foot rests. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're darn right, eh? Hit pay dirt, and listen, pal, it's all mine. It's all mine, little lard ass. There's gonna be no freeloading, okay? Your mooching days are done. You can, you can wave your little pea shooter all you like. I'm not gonna allow some stunk with an air hose and, and piss on his pants to horn in on the deal, so no freebies, huh? I said it quiet, but I said it straight. Look, time is running out, buddy boy. You take this wiseacre attitude with me, and I will smash you like a grasshopper. <coughs> he stamped his foot, stamped it so hard the tassel came off his shoe, and the exertion squeezed his hemorrhoids, and he let out a yelp. Ow! You know, you ought to see a proctologist there, pal. Ow! They can snip those hemis off with a pair of pinking shears and cauterize them with a curling iron and you'll be pain-free for years to come and you'll probably add 20 points to your bowling score too, huh? No. Oh. He shifted the, pen the pistol, not the pencil. The pencil was in his pocket. He shifted the pistol from his left hand to his right and suddenly his tone changed. Oh, come on. And he was pleading with me. You and me go way back, guy. Huh? Yeah. I've been like an uncle to you. Yeah. So many times when Rico or Tony wanted to run you out of town on a marble slab, I told him hands off to a while. He's, he's family. Yeah, I did that for you. Which Rico are you talking about? I don't know. What's he doesn't have a last name. name. Huh? He's your dead eye. I've told you that over and over what again. He? He's like Cher. <laughs> Sharing what? I don't get it. Anyway, I did all that for you. And more than once. Otherwise, you would have been floating down the Mississippi on a barge full of soybeans. Oh. Processed into tofu, eaten by skinny women in $100 jeans, and pooped out and floated down through the sewers of San Francisco and oh. out to the sea. Oh, spare me. Is that what you want for yourself? No. To be sludge on the ocean floor? Listen, listen, I, can, I could take you in on this deal as a consultant, shall we? <laughs> I had a cat once, and I had him neutered, but he still went out at night and served as a consultant. <laughs> no, no, not me. Stop wasting my time. Oh, come on. Joey, 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 why don't we go to Danny's and we'll talk about it over a bowl of chicken noodle soup and a hot Reuben, huh? What do you think, huh? <laughs> He thumped the pistol, the pistol butt on the desk, and he wheezed <laughs> from the effort. Look, you got 10 seconds to talk, Noir. You're trying to cut me out of the gravy train. I don't want to do it. But I'm not going to take that laying down. <sighs> laying is a transitive verb, shall we? Uh, what? Transitive verb is a verb that takes an object, okay? You, you lay down your head on a pillow, but you yourself lie down on a bed. So, what? so what you should have said was, I'm not going to take it lying All right, down. all right, all right. Joey didn't care for the grammar lesson. He shifted in his seat to get better aim at my aorta and he landed smack on those painful hemorrhoids. Oh! And I grabbed his right arm hey, and I twisted it. Hey. Oh. Lay on. your pistol down <sighs> on the table. <laughs> and then I pinched his oxygen tube to make him lie down, which he did. He laid his big noggin down on the desk and his body relaxed and he let out a long hissy fart. <laughs> Sounded like a Harley Davidson taking off down the alley. Smelled like fried automobile tires. Sweet dreams there, pal. I crimped the tube for 45 seconds, long enough to shift his synapses into neutral. And then I released, and he opened his eyes, and he blinked. Hey, what, what are you doing with my gun? I'm just borrowing it for a day or two, okay? Oh, okay. I helped him to his feet. Oh, thanks, guy. Lulu LaFollette called, Joey. Yeah? And she's uh, upset that you 
forgot that you said you'd meet her at the Hotel Cranston, room 716. Oh, she's geez. Got her green chiffon nighty on, and she's all hot and sweaty, <laughs> thinking about getting her ashes hauled, huh? Well, yeah. He grinned, and he heaved himself to his feet. It's kind of funny, but uh, my memory ain't what it used to be. Anyway, thanks a lot, guy. And he lumbered <laughs> off to perform amatory wonders on the buxom bl blonde bombshell who, for all I knew, was back home on her llama ranch in Stanley, North Dakota. And then, a minute later, he was back. Uh, say, uh, uh, Lulu who? La Follette, Lulu La Follette. Huh. Cranston. The, the name is familiar. The, the singer. Oh, singer. Yeah. oh, yeah. Joey, yeah, yeah remember? Yeah. And I put a hand on his shoulder, and I sang, some intertwined centipedes do it. In the winter, even Swedes do it. Huh. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Gorillas deep in the mists do it, hanging by their palms. True feminists do it, though they have qualms. Remember? Oh, right, right, you right. You got it now? Yeah, I remember that. Now. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Senile dementia. It made Joey a much nicer human being, you know? It should happen to more people than it does. Yeah, come on in. The door's unlocked there. Oh, Joey. Yeah. Uh, you got big feet, you know that, for a little short guy. I those, needed, those sound like orthopedic shoes. I need it for balance. Look, you sent me somewhere and uh, I forgot where. Mm. How about you write it down on a slip of paper? I was sending you home, Joey. Oh. Adele. I she see. wants you to check on Pookie and Mr. Big Boy. Okay? Wait, whoa, whoa, huh? what's wrong? Are the kitties all right? Cats or? are fine. Your cats are oh, fine, thank Joey. Thank goodness. They have a little fever, and Adele wants you to come home and slip a thermometer <laughs> up their butts, okay? I appreciate that, Gary Noir. I don't know what I'd do if my babies got sick and died. <laughs> thank out you. the door he went. Thank you. There was a whole other Joey from the guy aiming the pistol at me and threatening to make a new buttonhole. And I made a mental note. Joey, vulnerable to extreme anxiety about cats. In case of emergency, ask him if Pookie is feeling better. Mm -hmm.